Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. In the Big Data world, as you all know, the most prominent technology is Spark. So today we are going to talk about top 10 questions that you may be asked in interviews or you may be uh, hearing a lot about these terms when you are working with Spark. So let's get started. The first question that we will talk about and many times when people go for interviews, these fundamental questions uh, come up or questions which are related to this. So these the things that I'm going to talk about the top 10 things are something which have to be known by a developer or an architect who is working in the big data world to use Spark. So first of all, what is Spark? Spark is an open source distributed processing system used for big data workloads. Now, when we came into the big data world a couple of years back, the systems were distributed. How we were handling big data is by using distributed systems. So definitely traditional technologies would not be working efficiently. So there were new technologies that came in like Hadoop, MapReduce, Hive, Impala, lots of them. Specifically talking about MapReduce, that was the first ever um, First ever, or I would say, one something which came along with Hadoop. So we uh, used MapReduce to do the processing, but MapReduce had its own limitation uh, because MapReduce was not meant for doing iterative kind of processing, or there were limitations that it was not as fast as Spark. Later on, Spark was introduced as a distributed processing system because, and it had a lot of advantages like Spark takes the data into memory and operates on that. It can do iterative processing. It can do interactive querying much, much faster than MapReduce because of the fundamental architecture how Spark is built about taking data into memory and then operating on that. So that Spark is nothing but an open source distributed processing system meant for big data workloads. We can look at Spark in two parts. One is the foundation layer, which is nothing but Spark core APIs. Spark itself has been written in Scala, but it offers APIs for R, SQL, Python, Scala, Java, and others. So it helps programmers to write programs in multiple languages. That is that they're convenient uh, or familiar with. On top of that, Spark provides facilities like writing of Spark SQLs. They are uh, doing Spark streaming queries for real time use cases. MLlib, it also has a component for machine learning. It has graph computation. So it's all in all bundled together to serve all our big data needs. Open source Spark was there and then Databricks came along and they took open source Spark and added a lot of multiple features on top of that. So we see a lot of use of Databricks as well in today's market. They give enterprise great support. They give a lot of utilities. They have built Delta Lake. They have built Lake House, all taking open source Apache Spark and then building over it. So that's what Spark is. The second question and a fundamental one is what is RDD? RDD is nothing but resilient distributed data set. As the name suggests, it's a distributed data set, meaning it's an abstraction a distributed memory abstraction that lets the programmer perform in-memory computations. The whole architecture of Spark is based on in-memory computations. And it definitely works on a cluster. There are multiple uh, ways Spark can operate. It can operate on YARN, it can operate on MISOs, it can read uh, data from multiple file systems, whether it is S3, it is blob storage, it is multiple other storages that are available. But RDD is the most fundamental uh, unit when we talk about uh, execution in Spark. Because RDD, what it does it, it is the chunk of data or a distributed memory abstraction that you can take into the memory of each of the node where your executors are running and run your program in parallel. RDD is immutable. Any RDD when it is created, it cannot be altered. When you do a operation on that RDD, it creates a new RDD. That way the lineage is also maintained. It is well suited for interactive and iterative algorithms. That's where Spark scores a lot over MapReduce. So RDD is your fundamental unit or abstraction in Spark. 
coming on to the components the next question is what is a driver when we look at spark there are multiple components that we would see we would see driver we would see executor and then we would talk about task and partitions and all but the first thing to understand is what is a driver a driver internally is nothing but a program that has been written which runs in its own jvm the job of a driver is to run the execution it gives instructions to different executors and it coordinates the work that the executors are doing so driver is nothing but a coordinator or like a police inspector who is looking at everything that is being done at the cluster level with the executors so whatever program we write in spark whatever execution we do driver makes sure that things are done properly by the executors who are actually running the code or doing the work so driver is nothing but a program which runs in its own jvm and helps in giving instructions to executors and coordinating this whole uh, program that is running or the task that is running how does the driver get the things done now comes the executors what are executors executors are the work horses of the system they are the worker nodes they are processing the data and running individual tasks for a given spark job any job that is submitted on the cluster it will have tasks that need to be performed now these tasks are done actually on the executor on the nodes and this coordination between the different nodes in the cluster where executors are running is done by the driver so typically there is one driver in a cluster and multiple executors who are actually performing the task how will the executors perform the task the data that we are talking about is in terabytes or petabytes we cannot operate on the entire data on one node so definitely the data needs to be distributed to different executor or nodes in the cluster if the cluster has 10 nodes out of that five nodes are free to take up work then the data needs to be split in such a way that it can be run parallelly on those five executors so that splitting of data or logical chunk out of that large distributed data set is the partition and these partitions are executed in parallel at different executors so there can be a huge data set that we write into the file system that data set to be chunked into logical partitions or logical chunks of data and then they would be sent to each partition would be sent to each executor to execute the task in parallel so that's how the driver and executors will operate together then comes what are tasks so we spoke about a driver we spoke about multiple executors for simplicity sake assume one executor is running on one node so if there are three nodes we have three executors running task is something which is actually getting done using the partition so that partition of data that we spoke about the task will operate on that partition and there can be multiple tasks that are running on an executor so one executor doesn't execute one task it can execute multiple tasks and it depends on how many cores that executor has so depending on the cores the cores is the lowest core is the lowest granular level either we say core or slot or thread they are the ones who are deciding how many task will run on a single executor so if an executor has four cores and it is running four task it can work on four uh, it can work on the data and give back the result so task are nothing but uh the, the actual entity which is working on the data to give back the results so each executor can have multiple tasks running so the hierarchy would be driver executor task and core now what is a spark session we looked about the components looked at the components that are there but what is the starting point of any spark program that is a spark session we can create a spark session through a spark session builder and that will become our entry point to any spark program before spark 2 version 2 what we had was spark context object but the problem with spark context was if i had to use sql or i used to i have to do streaming or i have to use the core apis i had to create separate context for each of them there was a hive context there was a context for streaming for sql for core so 
that was the limitation but after spark 2 there was an abstraction created on top of all of these contexts that i had to create called as spark session so one spark session object i can use to uh, access whether used to do one spark session object can be looked on as a substitute for creating multiple context context that we used to do before spark 2 so that's my entry point now what another term which keeps coming and we have to understand is shuffling what is shuffling we spoke about data partitions we spoke about partitions being sent to different executors so definitely data is getting transmitted throughout the network that is shuffling the data transfer across the network that can be whenever we are executing job partitions need to be sent to different executors or we do a group by we do a order by we do a sort in any of these kind of operations data is getting shuffled from one node to another and that will cause a performance hit so our goal always is to minimize the shuffle for which we do a lot of optimizations which i have spoken in my performance optimization videos but essentially if we do a group by key if we do a reduce by key and those kind of things there will be data shuffling even joins will lead to data shuffling so data shuffling cannot be avoided but we have to minimize the amount of data that we are shuffling so uh, shuffling is nothing but transfer of data across the network whenever we are performing any kind of operation then <coughs> let's talk about another term that is used in the spark world and it it is a very useful thing to understand because spark is very optimized or it has a very great performance but one of the reason is lazy loading what is lazy loading so we have two things in spark when we talk about a spark program and about about writing operations there are two things one is transformation and one is action so whenever we are writing a spark program and we have run, written a bunch of transformations spark will not do anything till that point of time only when it when spark encounters a action that is when the dag is created and spark starts actually doing the execution it, that is why it is known as lazy loading it doesn't do it the moment it encounters the first operation which is a transformation it waits till it gets to an action and that's when it starts creating the dag and starts the execution so why it is done that way is because unless and until it has read through all the operations that i want to do on my data set the dag isn't created because it cannot create a optimized dag dag for example if there is 1 terabyte of data i write a bunch of transformations but in the action i am only planning to read first top 10 records then essentially the dag that spark would prepared would be optimized to do only that action because it doesn't want to load all the data into memory do all the transformations that are required because the output that is required is only the top 10 records that is why lazy loading helps spark in its performance optimization one more question that comes very often is that what is the difference between coalesce and repartition now both of these are used very often in spark operations to arrange the data or partition the data in the way we want so coalesce is used the both of these can be used but this is which is more efficient so the when we use coalesce the existing partitions can be minimized okay but we cannot whatever is the existing partitions if we have 10 partitions we can make the partitions to 8 but we cannot make it 12 the reason be is being coalesce tries to shuffle the data the way it is partition currently it tries to shuffle and optimize in that it doesn't do the entire shuffling of data that is why it and it minimizes the amount of shuffle across the network so it is little bit better in terms of performance than repartition but the disadvantage of this or the limitation you can say is that coalesce cannot increase the number of partitions that you currently have it can only decrease repartition creates new partition and does a full shuffle so if we do a repartition we can increase or decrease the number of partitions that we want because it is anyway doing a full shuffle so it has the liberty to change the number of partitions that are existing currently the coalesce will result in partitions with different amounts of data but repartition will roughly make equal size partition the reason be 
repartition is shuffling the entire data so it knows uh, it can actually go and uh, increase or decrease the number of partition and make all the partitions roughly of equal size but coalesce since it is not doing a full shuffle it is more optimized in terms of uh, the performance but it can only reduce the number of partitions and when it does that there is no guarantee that all of the partitions will be equal sized so that is the difference between coalesce and repartition but essentially both can be used based on the use case to partition our data even when we write data to a file system and we want to write certain uh, chunks of data in, in a particular manner like we want to write 10 part uh, files or we want roughly same sized uh, partitions then we will go for repartition so these were the top 10 things that are spoken about when we talk about Spark. There are many others, but I just took some of the very, very basic ones, which, which are good to know. And on this, we can further build the other uh, foundational concepts. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks a lot.